Hello, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. I'm Pratibha from Bulwark Technologies Private Limited, Bangalore. Thank you, everyone, for joining this webinar, especially in the current difficult situation. Hope all of you are doing good, well, and safe wherever you are. Let me quickly introduce about Bulwark. We are a value-added distributor of information security solution, having 20 plus years of experience in Middle East and now in India for past two years. And Bulwark represent around 10 vendors in India for the solutions like privilege, identity and access management, user behavior analysis, inside threat monitoring, antivirus, endpoint threat detection and re response, cloud email security, email archival solution, patch management, deception technology, multi-factor multi authentication, mobile device management, network monitoring solution, and secure remote access and management. We work as an extended arm of security vendors whom we represent in regions, promoting and selling the IT security products and solutions through our resell, reseller channel partners. This webinar is a part of ongoing channel enablement activities to support our partners to become familiar with and understand more about the product and the solutions we handle. Today, we are here with Arcon and leading information technology company specialized in risk control solution. Bulwark is a distribution part of Arcon in India as well as in the Middle East. And today's session covers a product overview of PAM and UBA solution and some, custom, some customer user cases. Please note, all the attendees will be muted during the presentation. Please raise your questions through the chat box on the right-hand side of the screen. We will try to answer the questions during or towards the end of the session. If you miss anything or any queries after the session, you can always reach out to Bulwark. We will be happy to help you in the terms of conducting any product demo, POC, or to get you any price code for the for your customer requirement. If you required, we can also send you the recorded version of this webinar in the coming days. With this, let me introduce the team from our vendor, Arcon. We have Mr. Tankav Shah, Head of Consulting and Solution, Mr. Vasim Sai, Pre-Sale Consultant, and Ms. Anuja Patel Sales, to take you through the product and answer your queries further. Good afternoon, Mr. Tankal, Vasim, and Anuja. Thank you for joining us to conduct the session. I'm handing over to you. The screen is yours. Yeah, thank you, Pratibha. And uh, hello, everyone. Uh, uh, a very good afternoon, and I hope you all are doing great and in good health during this COVID-19 situation. So to begin with my presentation, I would like to introduce you Arcon sales team for the India region. Uh, so we have Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Rohan Gayakwad, who has the sales for the APAC and the SAC region. And then uh, uh, we have four people uh, who takes care of the Indian sales. So I am there, Anuja Patil. I take care of pharma, healthcare, automobile, and the manufacturing domain. Then we have uh, Vatsal uh, Maru. He takes care of the IT, ITS, MSS, and the payment gateways. And then again, we have uh, Aksha Mondal. She takes care of the government, energy, utilities, logistics, and media. And we have Mohit, who takes care of the BFSI domain. This is my team, sales team for the India. Uh, so the agenda for today's webinar is to introduce about the Arcon Tech Solution as a company and to give you an overview about the our products, Arcon PAM and the UBA. Uh, this session will also give an opportunity to be a part of Arcon's global uh, sales team, global partner network. And this session will be followed by the question and answer round as well. So if you have any queries, any doubts, you can let us know. Uh, so this company was founded in year 2006 in London. And then the, uh, in year 2008, all the operations are moved to from its Mumbai office. Uh, we are a very a prominent player when it comes to. We are very consistent, consistent in terms of our product giving and our services. So we are also featured in the Gartner's Magic Quadrant and the Kapinger Calls uh, report as well. So we are uh, we have enterprise level customers spread across more than 20 countries. Uh, we have a strong sales and marketing team covering every strategic market and region in the world. So we are consistently keeping up with the market requirements by enhancing the technology and the product. Uh, uh, right now, we are headquartered in Mumbai in India, but we have our local offices spread out different regions. 
we have our offices in uae turkey london toronto nairobi kuala lumpur and sydney as well uh, we have a very uh, dynamic workforce we have almost 300 plus highly trained dedicated staff working from our mumbai office we have almost 30 people who are working for the professional services we have 40 people for the sales and marketing team who all are working through different regions for different verticals we have 80 plus people working for the customer support and we have also developed a separate facility for the customer support staff to have a seamless uh, customer service to our customers. We have almost 170 plus people who are working for our research and development department. Then uh, since our inception, we are growing bigger and stronger each year. We have 400 plus direct paying PAM customers. We have almost 1000 plus enterprise level customers. We are, have partnerships with 70 plus global system integrators and the resellers from different geographies. And we are happy and proud that we are consistently profitable from last 12 quarters. We are growing faster and bigger. We are a market leader when it comes to India, Middle East, and Africa. And we have also acquired a very large enterprise level clients when it comes to Singapore, Malaysia, Philippines, Indonesia, Japan, Australia, and Europe. Uh, we are a partner driven organization. So we believe uh, to have a very strong global channel network. And that's why we are here today. We are partnered with big four consulting firms like Deloitte, ENY, KPMG, PwC. We also partnered with the global tier one partners like IBM, Accenture, HPE, TCS, Take Mahindra. We have uh, various local and regional partners who help us to drive our business. Uh, then uh, this slide explains about uh, and showcase different integrators that we have to different regions. For APAC, we have TCS, KPMG, PwC, ENY, and also Bulwark. Uh, which helps us to drive our businesses. Then for Middle East, uh, Bulwark, Tech Mahindra, Manai Gil, uh, it plays a very important role. Then in Europe, we have Tech Mahindra, uh, Quirin. In North America also, we have TCS, PwC. And in Australia, we have Stickman, TCS, DXC as well as our system integrators. So uh, as I have said, we have partners uh, which are spread out to different regions and different areas. This slide showcases our partner footprint to different regions. Uh, we have a very huge customer base uh, spread across different regions, but when it comes to BFSI, we are very strong. We have almost 30% 30 30 of our client base for the BFSI sector. Almost 70% of Indian banks they are using our product, which also includes some of the government uh, sector bank and some of the private sector bank, like RBI, SEBI, and SBI. We have a huge customer base uh, for tele telecommunication as well, which counts for 25%. We have we have few clients for the pharmaceutical and healthcare, which counts for five percent. We we have a great uh, numbers uh, when it comes to manufacturing, energy utilities, and other uh, industries as well. So when it yeah, so when it comes to the revenue generation, APAC uh, is the country where we are very strong. So almost fifty percent of our uh, revenue generation is from the APAC region, followed by the Middle East, uh, which is thirty three percent, North America, which is eighty percent, Europe, which is seven point five percent, and Latin America, where we are growing. So this was about the Arcon, uh, Arcon and uh, how we have grown. When it comes to the products, so Arcon has got a set of product which helps any organization to secure its IT assets from targeted attacks and the insider threats. And how do we do it? That we are going to see today in our presentation and other slides. So today we are focusing more on, on the user behavior analytics and the privileged access management solution. Over to Vasim. Vasim will be uh, talking more about the privileged access management solution. Thank you. Hi, thank you, Anuja, and a very good afternoon to team. Hope you are doing great in this COVID situation. Uh, I have a request. Uh, could someone please make me a presenter? Okay, fair enough. Thank you. I will quickly start my presentation. Okay, great. So, uh, hello everyone. Very good afternoon. My name is Vaseem Sheikh, and I'm from the Arcon pre-sales team. I take care of the POCs, the demos, and certain questions with respect to the architecture as well. So today uh, we would be focusing about uh, the privilege identity, the PAM solution, and how do we cater? What are the services offered by a PAM solution? Uh, we'll talk about what are the challenges that uh, 
uh, every organization faces in day to day life. Uh, we have, you know, multiple forms that needs to be filled out in order to get an access to every IT asset. We have multiple administrators. We have different administrators, so that becomes difficult to handle this privilege IDs who are associated associated on these assets. We have multiple audit trials this week, audit trial processes, which uh, uh, helps us to define uh, in some or the other way who gets access to which devices and which user performed uh, which activity on the certain set of the assets. Apart from that, Yes, and apart from that, we have some manual processes that we have to go to certain workflows and we have to go to certain approvals in order to get the access to certain IT assets. Different set of IT assets has some different set of approval processes and leads to, leads to our job getting done in a more lengthy way. We have weak password processes. The passwords are stored in certain Excel sheets. The passwords are shared with you know any users, any shared privilege administrators. So these are certain uh, challenges that we are facing today in day to day in a data center. Apart from this, we have certain governing challenges where the access is always on to a certain on an IT asset and the administrative privilege IDs. These IDs are already being shared as I mentioned earlier. Now, for instance, if you know I'm a database administrator and I have set of 15 servers assigned to me in my bucket. Now, well, while it becomes my job to make sure that I'm managing those servers, this also becomes my job to make sure that the passwords are secure, the passwords are complex, and I'm changing those passwords as per my regulation. The audit trials, we have the weak audit trials, inefficient audit trials. We have the weak as no hold responsibilities. For instance, you know, I try to run certain recursive delete or a destructive command on the database or any Linux servers. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't be able to find out who did which user did access which did what on which target device or which IT asset. So these are basically four pillars of any PAM solution: password vault, single sign-on, privilege session management, and access control. What we'll be talking about also how far Archon solution goes beyond uh, of providing these features apart from these four core features of PAM solution. So the password password wall being one of the most important features of the PAM solution. This was one of the reasons why any PAM solution was evolved uh, to identify you know, hide certain passwords. And upon that, we came up with single sign on. We came up with privileged session management. We came up with access control policies, etc. And now we have evolved uh, a PAM solution by uh, giving out more certain more features apart from this more four pillars of any PAM, uh, PAM solution. Now in a typical uh, data center, we have these sort of IT assets. We have a Windows, we have Linux devices, we have databases, network devices, the security devices, and these are the privileged IDs that are associated to these devices. So in our con solution, we only we not only believe to secure these devices, but we also provide a good audit trial to whatever devices that we connect to. Now we're not only limiting to your servers, you're not only limiting to your databases, but yes, if there are certain business applications, your ERP applications or SAP applications, your human resource applications, our PAM also has the capability to secure the privilege IDs which are associated on those devices as well. So we'll first talk about one of the major pillars of the Archon PAM or any PAM solution, which is a single sign-on. Now we believe uh, in Archon, a single sign-on is not only limiting to one capability, but yes, we also believe that how far we could give a native approach to the customers to access to the target devices in a in a native way or in a one single platform. So for example, if I'm a Linux administrator and I I'm connecting to a Linux server. I may be using multiple ways to connect to a Linux server. Some of the customers prefer a GUI based connection. Some of the customers prefer a CLI based connections. So I am not limiting my capabilities to only one single way rather than I am exploring multiple ways to connect to this IT assets. One of the classic example is an Oracle database. Every new customer that we meet with has a different way or different approach to connect to this to their utilities to their devices. Similarly, in Archon, we provide multiple options to connect to this IT assets. 
So for example, if I'm a Windows administrator, I have an option to connect via RDP, via DAMware, via VNC, or via console. Similarly, if I'm using a, a toll, a, a, did, a Oracle database, I'm, I could use a command prompt, I could use a toll, a SQL management studio, etc. So we have largest out of the box connectors. We have nearly around 400 connectors, which uh, we are supporting, which we are securing to majorly 70 more, more than 70 type of applications, which includes your OSs, your network devices, your databases, your security devices, your business applications, etc. And the next one of the core important features of any time solution is the access control policies. Now, we, we in our con believe in access control policies into two levels, whereas the access control level one defines which user gets access to which devices, where, for example, if I'm a Linux administrator, maybe I do not want to go to a Windows server. So I would not be limiting my capabilities to only connect to different assets, which I do not need to go on those. So I could only connect to only those assets which I have been assigned to connect. And yes, if there is any new services or if there is any new assets which I have not been assigned to, I could raise a request for that and that would be going through certain approvals which rather in turn would get assigned to me. So we have this permanent, we have this one time, we have this time-based access mechanisms and we have created this uh, access mechanisms uh, in a very uh, simple way. We have created this virtual grouping uh, which we call as the LOB line of business. So for instance, we have a multiple major data centers, you know, located in different regions or multiple sites. So I could, uh, I could have multiple virtual grouping policies that can be created so that, you know, uh, we have multiple containers so that one user belonging to one container could not have the access to the devices or the IT assets which belong to the other container. So we have this virtual grouping, we have, have this LOB wise segregation, and on the basis of that, we also provide time-based, one-time, and day-based access. Further to access control level one, we have access control level two, which defines once the user is on those devices, what are the list of activities which he could perform? So for example, if I am a Linux administrator, I'm connecting to a Linux server with my root privilege. And at the same time, I am not allowed to run certain recursive delete or trying to delete certain files or try to modify certain files. So we, we, we create this policies, blacklisting policies uh, on the application level and we assign these policies to the users so that in such a way that, you know, uh, whatever commands a user is executing, if those commands are not assigned to the user, it not the user is not authorized to run those commands, the application will directly restrict the commands. Similarly to blacklisting, we also have create uh, something called as the elevation. For instance, of a, on a Windows server, I could restrict certain applications. On database, I could restrict certain queries. I could elevate certain processes, certain queries as well. So we have this access control policies on level one and level two into granularity, where one user get access to each devices, and further to it, once that user is onto that device, it depends what are the actions he could perform. Once he's got, once he gets onto that server or an IT asset. The next, the next point is session recording. Now we believe session recording is, uh, is divided into two parts. The first is uh, whatever activities that have been captured by the Archon Fam solution on an IT asset, we record in two ways. One is the text logs and one is the video logs. So we also give have given multiple handles to it so that you know we could filter out. Uh, the logs with respect to the activities that are performed, the users, the time, when, or the IT asset to which he got connected to. So the recording, session recording, or the audit trial, we have divided into two, where we give the session recording in the form of text as, as well as the video logs. Password vaulting. So this is one of the core features of the PAM solution, our PAM solution, where password vaulting where we create password policies and we assign these policies to the devices on the basis of the organization's password policy. So these passwords are one in a million. We have our own, so, so the data which is the passwords which are stored in Archon PAM, they are stored with AES 256-bit algorithm. And on top of that, we have our own proprietary algorithm. Just recently, 
in the last release we have announced uh, at the second stage that the users will have the capability to access those secrets uh, with help of the keys so at level one we have the aes 256 with algorithm sitting on top to secure your passwords your data but access at level two we also have given the uh, users uh, to have their so sort of access keys so that you know they could the the, the secrets are also not completely with the application the the other users could also have the access to the secrets as well so it's an electronic vault and we have also a password released workflow mechanism for instance you know if i want to run certain uh, vulnerability vulnerabilities on certain it assets and assuming that those vulnerability application is requesting for a password every time so we do not need to take a pain to give provide the password manually every time to the vulnerability application so we have the password release workflow where archon fam would release a password for certain amount of time to a user and once the password is for, for instance you know i vasim is requesting for a password for an hour of a windows device it has to go through a certain approval process once that approval has been done the password would be released for me for an hour and once my job is done after an hour the archon fam with the help of this password policy it will change the password for us so that you know the password is not with the user now so we have this password release workflow and uh, we could change uh, uh, we could automate the password policies with respect to my organization policy uh, we have one of the use cases one of the customers in dubai had uh, requested that they would wanted to run their passwords every midnight at 12 and we are probably doing that since last four years the application triggers the password changes the password of their assets uh, at what specific time which they have requested without any failures then yes we have a web-based application integration we have this as i mentioned in my previous slide we have the largest connector stack uh, which supports most of your it assets your telecom devices your thick client applications if in case uh, we have certain custom thick client application to which we do not have a connector we make sure that we create it uh, for you guys for for our customers for in three to five mandatory days so we have a web-based application. We have made the solution more browser, browser agnostic and uh, we, which supports multiple browsers as well. Yes, as I mentioned earlier, the password management feature also has the ability to change the hard-coded passwords. Maybe those passwords contain certain dependencies in certain INI files or certain configuration files. So we're not limiting our capabilities to only change the password of certain root accounts, certain named IDs or certain privileged IDs. But if there are certain dependencies of any service accounts or if there is dependency, any hard-coded parameter or certain scripts. So application also has the capability to run a password change which are also dependent on this script files, this configuration files as well. Now, um, these are the add-on features. Uh, apart from the four core features of the PAM solution, we have a multi-tenant architecture. Uh, so uh, for, for most of the customers who are MSP providers, uh, we also, our PAM solution also offers uh, a, a, a solution to them. Uh, in, in, uh, for instance, if I have uh, my business in multiple locations or in multiple sites, I can have a VA support multi-tenant architecture, assuming that we have multiple data centers in a large organization where we're using multiple domains. The application also has the capability to integrate with multiple domains. Similarly, how I'm authenticating to this application with my Active Directory, we also have a local repository where if i'm a third party guy coming into your organization for some troubleshooting purpose the administrator do not need to take a pain to add that user into the active directory rather what i could the administrator could do is he could add that user into a local repository and he could also define the limit till what time he needs the administrator to be active and once the usage once his troubleshooting his work purpose is completed that user ID will automatically be disabled. We are not deleting it, but in fact, we are disabling it. Uh, we also uh, integrate with a lot of change management tools, we, a lot of ticketing tools, ITSM solutions. And uh, yes, we have a web-based application. Uh, we, we, uh, we also uh, have a dual factor mechanism 
uh, to to the console as well. well in fact we have our own uh, dual factor authentication mobile app which runs on an offline mode and which does not require the subscription so we have we integrate with mobile otp we do integration with your sms otp your rsa tokens your soft tokens your jamal to, your, your hard hard tokens your uh, uh, biometric devices etc so these are the add-on features uh, what uh, we give a, uh, apart from the four core pillars of uh, any of the fam solution now let's move on to the typical the architecture of uh, uh, the the archon fam solution so this is the architecture we have three components to the architecture we have the application server we have the application server we have the secure gateway server and we have the database server the secure gateway server it's a linux server and which hold up to multiple concurrent sessions we're not limiting the concurrencies of the users who want to connect to the it assets so if uh, so here the end user tries to connect to the archon fam application this application requires port 443 to be open on the end user machine to connect to the application if there is an active directory he's logging in with this active directory credentials yes we could also integrate with the domain active directory and on top of that we also have certain multi-factor authentication options as well so once a user logs in into the archon fam console from there he could connect to the target devices using a secure gateway server now this is a linux server they require port 20 to open from the end user machine to the secure gateway so that whatever target devices whatever assets which i'm connecting to be a network device with my firewall with my databases with my business applications whatever ports which i need to keep open i need to keep open on my secure gateway server not on my end user machine because tomorrow if my end user machine compromises my secure gateway is still my my target devices are still secure because my ports are open on my end user machine so again an end user machine only requires to keep port 443 and port 22 open port 443 to access the archon fam application to console and port 22 is to route all my connections to the secure gateway server Guys, uh, if you have any questions, please do bother us in the in be between. I'll very be, be very happy to answer. And these are certain add-on utilities apart from uh, the the certain most features. We have a script manager which could help you to run certain scripts using the SFTP feature. You could transfer your files from one machine to another, from source to a destination. Yes, we have our own inbuilt query analyzer tool to perform command or query restriction on certain databases for instance if certain passwords have been changed on a windows device outside fam the password reconciliation will trigger the alert to the user stating that okay there is a password change which has happened on a windows device so the user uh, you know uh, changes password with with respect to what are the what the privilege password policies they have then we have the desk inside feature which you, through which you could connect to a remote workstation just recently we have announced a threat monitor threat detection system in the, the form of night analytics where it will identify the user's behavior and it will analyze the threat with respect to the behavior what the user is doing so in simple terms if i were to explain if vasim tries to log in from 9 a.m till 6 p.m now this becomes vasim's usual habit but tomorrow if i find out a certain activity where a login attempt happened at 2 a.m. in the midnight or was seen trying to run certain critical command which he's not been assigned to or was seen trying to connect to certain unwanted IT assets of the data center so this night analytics will identify your behavior and this will analyze your threats and it will provide a risk score on the basis of your uh, behavior so these are certain add-on utilities uh, are innovations that we have come up with uh previous uh years and to come up to the entire suit yes we have our confam is a comprehensive solution for our privileged users we have an agentless approach and the solution can be integrated with most of the third party solutions like splunk for analysis uh your most of the itsm ticketing solutions chain management solutions idam solutions so whatever identities that are created in archon pam we also have the capability to push in with identities into your pam into the pam solution as well 
we also work on we, we have the comprehensive approach to the application privilege management comprehensive vault technology we have our own password vault we do not rely on third party utilities we do not rely on third party resources whatever features that we were talking about that has been created by our team as only then we have the enhanced auto discovery model uh, which uh, defines uh, who are the which triggers the discovery on your devices your uh, your databases your linux your windows devices to find out who are the active dormant or inactive users on your asset so this is the comprehensive feature the overall a framework of, of AMP solution, which we talk about in terms of security. Yes, we do follow these four I principles, uh, which uh, supports the dual factor authentication. We have the robust password wall, our databases encryption with AES 256 bit algorithm. Uh, we are more efficient with respect to single sign on, with respect to password management, with respect to the access control features that we provide. In fact, we go into more granularities uh in term in access control virtual grouping privilege session management uh we have this real-time threat, threat analysis uh as i mentioned uh, in my previous slide uh which analyzes your human your human behavior and identifies your risk score on more on dot we have 80 plus type of reports and yes we are also working on customization customizable reporting policies where the users gets the ability to select whatever information that he wants from a report for the auditing purpose so we are not now relying on those static reports but yes we have moved far ahead on dynamic reporting policies then yes we have a scalable architecture where most of the customers even if your msp providers would be able to integrate the pam solution we do support multiple clouds environment uh, be it on aws azure or google cloud so we try to focus we try to uh, use these native features of cloud environments uh, if, if we are hosting the solution on cloud. So these are some of the third-party tools that we have integrated with the SIM solutions, QRadar, McAfee. Uh, we have the multi-factor authentication tool. We have Vasco, Jamal, we have RSA, we have SafeNet. We do also integrate with certain change management tools and IDAM solutions as well. And these are our differentiators, our USPs and the differentiators. We have the comprehensive features for the local uh, privilege users. Uh, we have full blown privilege access management solution to our privilege users. Then we have a ne near zero time. The, the way we are taking our PAM solution, uh, apart from those access control, single sign on, we have far gone beyond that to give a zero time downtime solution to our data centers. Then we have a best in class real time analysis support we support your mac and linux uh, devices as well we have an agentless approach browser we absolutely yes we have made the solution browser agnostic earlier we used to only support one single platform but yes we have limited we have not limiting our capabilities to one thing we are enhancing our browser agnostic performance as well so we support google chrome we support ie we support mozilla microsoft edge so these are the major browsers and in case if the customer do not prefer uh, to access the solution via browser we also have a thick client option for them as well uh, these are some of the replacement case studies that we have replaced you know uh, uh, Kotak Mahindra Bank one of the mo major banks so most of the banking sections most of the governing bodies most of the banking entities are now becoming our customers this is one of the prime examples where we have replaced Kotak Mahindra Bank to the other entities with our confam solution then the, the then this is this is one of the replacement case studies of a telecom uh, a company that we have uh, replaced with Airtel. This is one of the fourth last telecom company in the world and which is our, our customer now. So most of the telecom devices, in fact, all the telecom devices, uh, we do support that as well. When in, when in terms of talking about the cloud architecture, this is one of the customers, Bharat Petroleum, uh, who we have onboarded our solution on cloud on AWS environment, where we try to showcase our entity our capability on aws cloud with using their native uh, features on aws 
And now in certain, in certain sense, in this COVID-19 situations, all of us have to do a work from home situation. And sometimes it becomes difficult for the, for the administrators, for the end users uh, to connect with the assets, uh, to communicate with the third party administrators, to elevate certain applications. So we have also taken care of this limitations uh, during this work from home situation where uh, if you want to access the PAM solution, we could post the PAM solution in a DMZ and uh, yes, we could access the PAM solution via VPN or we could host the application in a secure zone and connect to the secure zone with multi-factor authentication as well. Then we have a remote assist feature with the help of that remote assist, we could, we could connect to the end user machine just like how we use BombGar or third-party utilities, Archon PAM has created its own set of uh, feature or a utility which helps the administrators to connect with the end users and share certain files, elevate certain applications, and do some, some sort of troubleshooting if required. Then we have the endpoint privilege management, then we have a UBA for end user, um, end user uh, privilege user and user machines as well. So this was about the Archon PAM. We, we spoke about the product. We spoke about the Archon organization. Uh, please do let us know if you have any questions. Now I will be having my colleague Sankal to take on the UBA part and explore uh, the e EPM and the UBA feature. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Vaseem. Uh, can you please make me the presenter? Oh, yeah, thank you. So I'll just share my screen. Okay, so guys, are you able to see the screen? If Vaseem can confirm. Yes, Uncle. Yeah, thank you, Vaseem. Yeah, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. Hope uh, you guys are doing great. Uh, stay home, stay safe is the mantra these days. And uh, this, uh, I would like to thank Bulwark for uh, giving us an opportunity to present our product. So as Vaseem has uh, demonstrated the Archon PAM solution, which is our primary product using which you will be able to secure all the technologies that are available in the server zone of your data center. Now I am going to talk about the tool that is user behavior analytics, which is going to take care of the end user zone of your data center. Uh, my name is Sankalp Shah and I am heading the consulting and the solutioning department of Archon Tech Solutions. I have a 10 plus years of experience in consulting and designing cyber security framework for different industries and domains. So user behavior analytics. Now this term or this terminology, you know, creates a huge amount of curiosity in the minds of people. So what is what exactly is user user behavior analytics? Now user behavior analytics can be considered as a tool which can be used to detect anomalous behavior of the end user. That means if Sankalp is a Windows administrator who is working in your organization and he is using Windows desktop MSTSC utility or VMware vSphere clients kind of utilities to perform his day to day activity, but suddenly he uses a tool called Putty and connects to a Linux box and tries to do some activity. Now this anomaly anomalous behavior of Sankal will be detected by the user behavior analytics tool. Another example if I can give is if Sankal as an end user belonging to any department, whether he's in the HR department or the finance department or the travel desk, etc. If he is regularly downloading only 10 to 15 MB of data to, pro, uh, to perform his day to day operations, suddenly downloads 5 GB of data in uh, on a Friday night or something like that. Now this becomes an anomaly and can be detected by this particular tool. So this is the concept that is user behavior analytics. So what we are doing is we are implementing a tool to understand the behavior of the user and based on the uh, normal behavior, we will be able to understand if there is any anomaly or any anomalous activity that has been done by that particular user within your organization. So that's the concept of user behavior analytics. 
Now, what is the why is the need of user behavior analytics? Now, in this work from home situation, hundreds and hundreds of employees are working from home. Now, how are they working from home? They are connecting to the organization's network using different means. Either they use a jump box or either they use a VPN. There are situations where the employees have not been able to uh, take home their laptop, their organization's laptop. So they are using their home or personal laptop to get into the organization and they are performing their day to day operations. Now this can become a risk in an organization because there, uh, the administrators do not have control over which user is going to use which device to connect to their organization's network to perform their day to day activity. Now in this situation what user behavior analytics or Archon UBA can provide you is you can implement this particular tool install the agents on all the endpoints of the end users and monitor detailed activities of each and every users that they perform on that laptop or desktops. So user behavior analytics can become a powerful tool to reinforce enterprise security framework for the end users at the endpoint level and there are mechanisms or features within the solution which can raise the alerts on the real time basis using which uh, actions can be taken even uh, though in this pandemic situation where all the end users are connected to the organization from remote locations. So this is how this UBA tool will help you define or implement different security policies for the endpoint and the end user activity. What are the key features of Archon UBA? Let's talk about the feature one that is session monitoring. So the agent that is sitting on the end user machine will capture each and every record of the activities that is done by the end user in the form of text recording as well as in the form of a video as well. So for example, if Sankalp is logging into the machine at 9 a.m. in the morning, he opened Google Chrome.exe, navigated to gmail.com, navigated to facebook.com, twitter.com, youtube.com, etc. Then used VMware vSphere client to connect to different Windows servers uh, within the organization and perform the activity and then post 6 p.m. He logged off from his machine. Now all this activity that Sankalp does on his end user machine will be captured by the UBA agent which is sitting on his machine and he will be able to generate the logs in two different forms. One is the text recording. So the video logs or the text logs of the UBA solution will say that Sankalp logged into the end user machine at 9 a.m. in the morning and logged off at 6 p.m. in the evening and these were the applications which were used by Sankal during the day for this much amount of time. Now if in case the uh, the administrator wants to monitor the end user activity that it does for critical applications like registry editor or uh, you can say uh, services.msc or task manager then what we can do is we can implement the video recording profile as well. So whenever Sankal opens task manager and whatever he does whether he kills a process or initiates a new process or checks the RAM and the CPU of his machine that entire activity video can be captured by the UBA agent. The second feature that UBA provides is user restrictions. Now at times we have seen that there uh, because of some operational activities the end user has local admin privileges on his desktops or laptops. Now in this situation he becomes the total owner of that laptop and desktop and can use different tools which needs admin privileges and can perform malicious activity. Now in this situation because of the operational activities the giving of the admin privileges to the end user becomes a mandatory thing for the administrators of the data center. But what we can do is you can implement this particular tool and can restrict the other applications as well. So let's take an example that if you are making sankalp.sha ID as a local administrator on his laptop via Active Directory, then you can use user behavior analytics tool of Archon Tech Solutions and you can restrict operations like registry editor, services.msc, whether he will not be able to start or stop any particular services so that his admin privileges can be utilized only for the activities that the end user needs to perform. So this is how what we can do is even though sankalp.sha is a user ID which is a local administrator on the laptop still applications can be restricted using the UBA agent. The third feature that Archon UBA provides is the privilege elevation feature. Now majority of the organization what we have seen is that if there is a domain ID of the end user 
he logs in into his laptop he is actually a standard user which doesn't have admin level privileges to perform activities like install the application uninstall the application restart a particular service on his desktop etc now there is a possibility that sankalp as a user wants to install a filezilla software now in a normal scenario what will happen is sankalp will raise a ticket or write an email uh, to the it support team the it support team will take a remote connection to his laptop he will use the uh, he will use the application as run as a different user insert the administrator credential and he will install that particular application or what he can do is he can log off from the standard user log in into the machine as a local administrator and perform that particular activity now this thing can take time especially in this covid 19 situation for for example if today sankal wants to install filezilla to download certain files from a file server now if i raise a ticket then that ticket will get approved that ticket will go to the it administrator he will take a remote session to my machine elevate the privilege and then do the activity now i can avoid all these things now how do i do that i can use the uba agent and i can raise a request that i need to install filezilla tool on my laptop that request will go to the uba administrator and he will approve it for a specific time like for example 3 pm to 4 pm once that request gets approved sankal will get a notification that you will have admin level privileges only to install the filezilla application on the desktop that you have mentioned for 3 pm to 4 pm now once i get that i can do is i can self i mean i can myself raise the privileges or elevate the privileges using the uba agent and i will be able to install that filezilla tool within my laptop this will not only save a lot of time but it will also help in maintaining the audit trail whether which user has raised the request of elevating the privilege for installing which application and it was approved by which administrator so all this audit trail will also be uh, mentioned or will be available within the arcon uba solution the other features that our solution provides is the productivity enhancement feature now how do i say that now as i mentioned earlier that the uba agent will be able to detect and capture each and every activity that the end user does on his laptop and desktop now based on the data that is collected by the uh, uba agent we will be able to identify how much productivity or how productive the employee is so for example if sankalp is belonging to uh, the accounts department where he is supposed to work only on three applications which is tally or uh, word or excel file and the outlook for viewing the emails now using this agent if you are able to understand the entire activities done by the end user you will be able to get how much number of hours sankalp is spending in these applications like tally or outlook or excel or word other activities like uh, uh, watching view videos on youtube or navigating to facebook or twitter.com something like that all will be detected and we will be able to calculate the productivity of sankalp so this is how this tool will also help in calculating the productivity of the end user for which the profile has been applied the other thing is meeting compliances now there are multiple compliances like pci dss sox nist which gives guidelines on how to secure the endpoints available in the organization and how to provide access control of the uh, for the end users who are using these endpoints so using this tool by deploying features like video recording text recording privilege elevation app application restrictions etc we will be able to meet certain points of these compliances which are related to the endpoints now comes the other part that is behavior analytics now as mentioned earlier this tool will capture huge amount of data that is sankalp or each and every user within the organization is using which application for how much amount of time and what is uh, or what are the restricted applications which are being accessed by which user or how many users are actually raising the request for elevating the privileges for doing certain activities now all these data will be gathered in the or will be collected in the uba database so what we do is we have the artificial intelligence component which we deploy which will start learning from the uba database it will keep on learning the uh, learning from the data that is there in the uh, uba database and he will be able to predict the risk scoring system so you will be so that ai component will be able to say how which employee can become a risk to the organization 
now let's take an example of sankalp itself now sankalp belongs to uh, the accounts accounts team and he is not supposed to have access to registry editor so i have restricted the application registry editor on his laptop now there may be a situation where sankalp tries to open registry editor multiple times in a day every single day by using different different methods like for example cmd or like for example a powershell etc now all these can be detected as the anomaly and based on which the artificial intelligence component will be able to provide the data that sankalp can from sankalp from belonging to the accounts department uh, can become a risk or a threat to the organization the other concept or the other features that our tool provides is the data loss prevention feature now this is a small concept which is available in our solution now our con uba agent will be able to detect any external storage that is that gets attached to the laptop or desktop it will be able to restrict it or it will be able to monitor and capture the logs of which files are transferred from which device to which device so this small concept of data loss prevention is also available within our solution now as i mentioned there are lots and lots of data that is available in the that is captured by the uba agent which gets stored in the database now obviously this uba administrator or the data center administrators will be able to see these reports uh, they see this data in the form of reports in graphical as well as textual format so we have a reporting module which is very dynamic and which uses the graphs to present the risk scoring system along with the textual data the other thing is we do have a live dashboard as well in our solution where you will be able to see or you will be able to understand which alerts were raised during uh, on the real time basis so for example if sankalp is trying to open the registry editor which is a restricted application then there will be an alert which will be generated in the form of email as well as the count on the dashboard of the raised alert will be increased so the uba administrator will be able to understand that there is an increase in the count of alerts and by clicking on that alerts in the dashboard he will be able to get the details of that alert that sankalp at this particular time tried to open registry editor which is a restricted application so using this live dashboard you will be able to take actions if uh, on the suspicious activity all, almost on a real time basis so these were the features of user behavior analytics uh, i'll just take a few moments to give them in brief one is the text and the video recording that is session monitoring second is the application restrictions for the user third is the privilege elevation and fourth is the uh, what you can say using the combination we will be able to understand we will be able to calculate the productivity or using the artificial intelligence we will be able to understand uh, the anomaly in the behavior of the user and will be able to predict the insider threats within the organization so these are the features that are currently available in the arcon uba using which you will be able to secure the end user zone of the data center now this is the architecture of the uba solution so as you can see if you can see my mouse movement these are the agents that are installed on the end user machine now currently we support only windows operating system as the endpoints so my uba agent is a windows based agent which gets installed on the end user machine and is continuously communicating to the uba dashboard or the uba application server this uba application server is hosted in the iis uh, which is the hosting uh, service and uh, since we are using dotnet 4.5 as the core to develop this particular product internet information services that is iis becomes the web best web hosting web server for hosting our application now this application server is continuously communicating to the database server and this database server we host it on the ms sql platform so ms sql server 2012 and above is supported for this particular application and this is the administrator or the uba administrator who can log in into the web server and can see the process data in the form of reports from this particular dashboard so this is a three layer architecture where uba agent communicates to the application server application server stores the data in the database server and this data can be viewed in the form of reports and dashboard by this administrator via dashboard so this is about the arcon uba solution on how you can use it to secure your end user zone now as you have mentioned as uh, wasim has mentioned earlier the pam solution takes care of the server zone of your data center and arcon uba can take care of the end user part of your data center 
So using the Arcon products, that is Arcon PAM solution and Arcon UBA, we will be able to implement the Arcon cyber security framework, which will be able to secure your technologies in the data center, which is Linux, Windows, databases, network devices, etc., and also the endpoints and also monitor each and every user within the organization in order to understand which employee can become a threat to the organization. So this is how we would like to implement our products in the customer's data center to enhance the security of the uh, data center. Now this tool can be integrated with other security solutions as well. So the first is the two factor authentication. So while logging into the UBA dashboard for viewing the reports and the data, you can integrate it with Arcon Authenticator, which is the built in two factor authentication application, which comes uh, along with the suit of Arcon UBA and Arcon PAM solution that can be used as a two factor authentication and also RSA, which is a hardware and a software token based two factor authentication. So our solution can be integrated with two factor authentication solution. Now the other thing is the SIEM solution. Now SIEM solution generates a huge amount of logs for each and every server on which it is deployed. So you must have heard a concept of UEBA. Now currently we talked only about UBA because I was talking only about analyzing the behavior of the user. Now when the Arcon UBA gets integrated with the SIEM solution which is deployed in the customer's environment, we will be able to say that we have deployed the concept of UEBA that is user entity behavior analysis. So all the logs of the SIEM and the UBA can be integrated in a one database and the artificial com uh, intelligence component can be deployed on that particular database and he will be able to understand the behavior of not only the users but also of the servers as well. So this is how integrating with other security solutions can also help create or uh, you can say extend the cyber security framework that we are planning to integrate or implement in the customer's data center. Now these are certain work from home use cases that we have re recently implemented in major in few of the customer location. So first is one of the big fours that they had approached us for implementing this solution and their requirement was they have an audit and consulting team. Now they are supposed to use only tally as a software wind uh, uh, MS Word MS Excel Google Chrome and MS Outlook for viewing the uh, emails. Now they are supposed to use only five applications. So what we did was we first implemented this tool in the customer's environment. We were able to understand which user were using which applications and based on that data we were able to understand that let's define a policy that this particular team should have access to only five application. Team number two should have application have access to only these particular set of application based on which the policies were defined and we whitelisted the application based on the users. So if Sankalp is working in that organization and he belongs to the consulting team, then that Sankalp as an end user will be able to open only five application and he will not be able to open any other application. All the applications will be restricted apart from the five which are whitelisted. So this was one of the very use, uh, very, very important use case uh, that we had deployed for big, uh, one of the big four organization where because of which they were able to you know, uh, have a sound sleep at night that even though if the uh, end user is using his personal laptop or personal desktop or organization's desktop or laptop, he will be able to use only five of the application. So this was one of the use case. The second use case that we implemented in one of the largest banks of India was that the customer wanted to check each and every activity done by the end user. So we implemented uh, the video and the text recording feature of this particular solution for all the users of the organization and we were able to identify which user is actually working or how many hours within the production hours and how many and which utilities or applications are being used to perform the operational activities. So this was another use case uh, that helped the bank understand that how many users are using unnecessary applications when it when they are connected to their organization's network via VPN. So we were able to then create a different set of restriction policies and make their environment more secure. The third thing is uh, there is an audit firm that is ANB Consulting is a sister organization that is uh, ANB Consulting and Arcon are sister co companies and the ANB Consulting is certain certified audit firm. 
13 stands for computer emergency response team of india now this team actually provides guidelines on how to secure the endpoints now using this particular tool we first implemented it with anb consulting team and we were able to meet the guidelines provided by this certain organization and we deployed this particular uh, software to uh, make the endpoints compatible or compliant with the certain guidelines as well so these are the different uh, work from home use cases that we have implemented recently for major customers or major players in the market and uh, we are we are doing it uh, as we are speaking there are multiple implementations going on also for other customers so this tool becomes a very important tool in this particular scenario where rem people are remotely connecting to the organization's network and are performing day to day activities without having control of which device the end user is using to connect to the organization now so this was about the archon uba tool uh, if you have any questions you can just let us know we will be happy to answer uh, it right uh, right away now what i would like to say is why would you like to partnership or have a partnership with archon now we have a global support we provide we have support not only for archon pam solutions we have uh, support for Archon UBA and also there is one more tool in our organization that is Archon Security Compliance Management. So we have a global support which works 24-7 for different different regions as well. Our implementation methodology is also very simple. Some of you might have been uh, introduced to the implementation method of uh, Archon PAM solution. All we have to do is host the application server in the IIS, host the database, use the DB setting file to connect to the database and then my application becomes up and running so we have a very agile implementation process also third thing our product are always found in the form of suit so when we talk about pam solution you don't have to buy a separate license for single sign on a separate license for password management a separate license for access control if you buy the archon pam solution you buy all the features you get all the features within that same is with the case of uba as well so when you buy Archon UBA, do not have to you do not have to buy separate licenses for privilege elevation or you can say uh, application restriction, etc. We always sell our products in the form of product suit. The other thing is we have a very strong presence as Anuja in the start, as she said that we have uh, that we have covered majority of the uh, you can say 80 percent of the bank banking industry in the in India and we are uh, expanding over different different regions across the globe second thing is flexible customization the turnaround time for uh, providing the customers request is also very quick and the other thing is our products are at the core of our product is very flexible so under so if we have to tune our feature as per the customer's environment it becomes very easy for us because of which our turnaround time is also very quick other thing is we have regular and uh, you can say quarterly uh, uh, releases of new versions of the products which are uh, released uh, uh, which are released and which are informed to the customer a day in and day out the other thing is highly scalable architecture so as Vaseem mentioned uh, about the pam solution we do not use the concept of jump server which is being used by our other competitors we use the distributed or decentralized approach for all our products Hence, our products are more scalable compared to the other competitors. Now, what are the partner benefits that you will get when you work with our contact solution? You will get a direct support from the OEM for demos and implementation. It will, you will be surprised to know that 85 to 90 percent of the product deployment in the customer's environment are done by the OEM and all the enterprise level demos and POCs are conducted by our contact solutions himself and you can definitely say we can work with our partners and come up with multiple marketing strategies which suits the partner as well as which suits us as well and more importantly yes commercially we are very flexible for small and medium scale customers as well so working with us you will not be able to touch just the enterprise customers but or all the levels of customer whether it's a small or a medium or the enterprise customers so you will get all these benefits of being a partner with our contact solution while promoting our products these are uh, some of the uh, client logos that we already have who are using mul multiple products of our contact solutions archon pam solution and archon uba and there is one more tool that we have that is archon security compliance management tool 
which uh, is deployed in a couple of customers places and they are meeting the audit requirements because of that particular tool so these are some of the uh, huge or big logos these are some of the international ones uh, where so we are into different domains different industries whether it's a telecom or a bfsi sector or a travel industry or a matrimony we are there and we are products are you being used by all these users to a good extent and they are they have secured their data centers using our products so uh, as i uh, would like to conclude this particular uh, session by saying that you got a good understanding of arcon pam solution and arcon uba and combining both the products we will be able to design the arcon cyber security framework using which we will be able to enhance the security of the data centers of our customer so uh, i'm sure you will have uh, a good amount of questions uh, we can definitely have a question and answer sessions right away and in case if you have any more queries you can definitely reach out to anuja patel who is from arcon or pratibha from bulwark and i would like to thank uh, pratibha and anuja for uh, conducting and arranging this particular webinar where we were able to you know present our arcon pam solution and arcon uba as the product so thank you so much in case if you have any questions you can definitely let us know i'll hand it over to pratibha thank you thank you sankal and thank you wasim and anuja yes we do have some questions from uh, partners i bidun uh, can you just yeah. uh, go through some uh, go through on the questions yeah uh, sankal uh, we have one question from sai so uh, if you this is uh, can arcon uba supports url block yes so we will be able to restrict the uh, websites for a particular set of users so we have implemented this case in one of the customer place where the hr department have access to linkedin most monster jobs and nokri.com but these urls are restricted to the it administrators fine and one more uh, we have uh, arcon uba which all platform it supports uh so uh, what do so if you mean by platform then the endpoints has to be a windows machine and this solution gets deployed on a windows server with ms sql as the database platform okay and uh, for the mac machines i would say that part is there on our roadmap so we will be supporting the macbook for uh, you arcon uba as the endpoint as well but it's there on our roadmap Okay, we have one more question. So, mm -hmm. if the abnormal activity is detected in UBA, and uh, so can Arcon Pam block the anomaly user access of the server automatically without any human intervention? So, see, in Arcon Pam solution, you can define different policies for restricting the activity. So, for example, if you say Sankalp, even though he has a, a root level access to a Linux box. but he should not be able to execute a power of command then you will be able to restrict the power of command within the application so that end user cannot execute it itself so rather than uh, taking a corrective measure what we will do is we will configure it as a preventive measure okay so we have next question can you configure in pam only the user uh, who have uba installed only have the access of the critical servers so in the arcon pam solution as wasim has mentioned earlier there is a concept of virtual grouping so for example if you say that sankalp has access only is supposed to have access only to five servers then access to five servers only will be mapped to the, the profile sankalp.sha so there will not be a scenario where sankalp shouldn't have i mean sankalp is not supposed to have access to a particular server but he will be able to take a connection through the pam so this can be taken care by using the virtual grouping feature of our solution fine so next question can the dlp feature in uba can it block upload of data to saas applications right so in this case uh, this is one of the use case actually we are deploying it one of the big four that i mentioned earlier so they want that the customers or the end user should not be able to upload the data in gmail or google drive or should not be able to upload the data in dropbox so what we have done is we have restricted the uh, dropbox.com and we have restricted the google drive url 
within the uh, uh, for those particular uh, users in the team so this is how we currently restrict the upload of data to any saas based uh, applications uh, uh, service providers fine so we have one more question from adai column uh, mm -hmm. if there are external attack on the endpoint say like ransomware and all uh, with mm -hmm. the uba uh, then uba can detect this block uh no so we will not uh, see using the uh, uba agent we will not be able to uh, identify the attacks by ransomware or any other malware or anything like that but what we can say is we can implement the whitelisting policies for all the set of users so for example if sankalp is supposed to work only on sap sap application just whitelist one application for me now in this case what will happen is even if somebody sends me a malicious exe or a game ex uh, in the form of game or something like that even if i try to open it my agent will be able to restrict it because ransomware exes and malware exes will always be merged with some genuine application like uh, flash or some game.exe something like that so what we can do is we can implement the uh, whitelisting concept on for all the end users that will restrict the execution of exe which in turn actually spreads the ransomware so this is how it can use the uba to stop the spread of ransomware but if the ransomware is an automatically or you can say an automatic running exe which runs in the background then uba agent will not be able to detect that fine uh, we have one more question from rohit uh, can arcon gives the real time users session monitoring yes so there are two things to it one is you want to see the uh, you want to monitor the target device session so for example if sankalp is logged in into the pam solution and has taken connection to a linux box using a root account and uh, wasim wants to monitor what sankalp is doing on the real time basis then we have a real time session monitoring feature available within the pam solution itself so using which you will be able to understand what commands are getting executed on the real time by sankalp on that linux box using the root account absolutely and to also to add uh, what sankalp just says uh, we also have the ability to block and uh, drop the user if he tries to do certain unwanted activities on the session so for example if sankalp uh, is the administrator and wasim wants to monitor what are the activities that are performed by sankalp and suddenly if i see sankalp uh running certain unwanted commands or queries i could direct, directly block sankalp with a custom message stating that you are not being authorized to do this please get the approval or if if i find that he's running some unwanted queries or commands i could directly terminate sankalp from the session itself okay does this answer a question yes okay thank you any more further questions I think that's it. I think that's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hi everyone. Thank you for your uh, time and thank you, Arcon team, for your wonderful uh, time you spent with us for giving this uh, webinar. And I would like to tell all the attendees if you have any question uh, after this, you can always write to us. And uh, you, I, I hope you all have our contact details. You can reach at any time if any of your customers need any presentation and. And if you required any pricing for the solution, and I'll be sharing your mail with this presentation. You can use it for your customers going forward. And be uh, stay home, stay safe. Happy uh, week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank, Thank you, Pratibha. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye.